at 9 a.m. every single morning, guys, in my Discord. And we just pump every single day, right? So with that, with, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And we're going to enter stock. We're going to enter Weeble. We're going to get right. We're going to get right. We're going to get right. So again, my name is Tone. You guys can follow me at Goku Trade Stocks. That's my alter ego. I'm Goku when it comes to stock trading because I'm simply a beast and not just my own horn, but this helped me to quit my job. This helped me to uh, retire my mom. This helped me to buy a house. This helped me to give back to my community, right? So I do this full time every day, 9 a.m. And we're gonna go over the basics today. Um, I got a strategy for you guys too that's that's almost like a hundred percent. So I want you guys to be able to start with that. Uh, with that being said, I don't know how many beginner traders we have here. Uh, so I'm gonna just go very, very basic and then I'm gonna just speed it up a little bit, right? So first thing you got to know is if you guys are trading, there's two uh things or there's there's two methods when you trade. You got calls and you have puts, calls indicating that the stock is going up in price and puts indicating that the stock is going down in price, right? Very, very basic. I always tell people it's similar to roulette. You got red and you got black, right? Very, very simple, right? So when trading, guys, you always, always want to use your four-hour time frame. Your four-hour time frame is the most crucial time frame when trading, right? When you intraday trade, you want to use your four-hour time frame. And the reason being is because when you chart off your daily time frame, right? Those candlesticks, if we go to our daily, and I, I hope you guys can see my screen, right? If you guys can see my screen, it is showing me here a 266, right? But the stock is trading at 254. So if I go ahead and plot a line or I plot a, a, a support, um, I'm sorry, if I plot a resistance line up here at 266, and I go ahead and switch it over to my one minute, can I see that line, guys? No, right? What if I went to my 15 minute, right? I wouldn't be able to see it. So most most of the time when we're when we're when we're taught to to chart, we're always taught to use um, the top down approach. And I've realized that that does not work. And the reason that it does not work is because when we're trading, we only see stocks at the current price, right? So like let's say we're here at the two fifty four. We'll, we'll go ahead and place a line at this two fifty four, right? Stock is trading at the two fifty four. So we go to our 15 minute line, we'll be able to see that, correct? Right? So again, we want to use our four hour time frame opposed to using the daily. Now, the reason that I love the four hour time frame, guys, is because this is where you catch uh, the break above or the break below, right? And the break above means you can take calls when the stock breaks above that price, and you can take puts when the stock breaks below that price. And I'll show you exactly what that means, right? So here we have our chart on the four hour of McDonald's. MCD is the ticker, right? We'll go ahead and grab our horizontal and we'll start plotting from the bottom, right? I always start from the bottom because obviously that's where price has been hitting, right? So not top, I start from bottom. So let's say here, we got a price point here, right? Why, why would I put that price here? Is because you see we have more uh, multiple um, touches. So we have a touch here, we have a touch here, we, we have a touch here. And the goal of, intraday trading guys is to always look left right so you want to see what the market is doing to the left we also touch here we touch here we touch here so we can see that that's a critical level correct now um another trick that you guys want to use is don't always get fixated on these wicks is what you call them those are rejections you don't always want to get fixated on rejection you want to get fixated on the closing of the body right so that'll be here you see how there's no wick there guys you only see bodies right? This is the body. This is the body. You only see bodies. You want to grab the body. Now, the reason that you want to grab the body is because that is where the stock closed, right? The wick is not going to be super important because that is a rejection, right? So you never closed at, at that level, right? So a lot of people that trade use the wick, but the wick is not the important part. The body, the open and the close is the most important uh, part of trading, right? So we go ahead and grab our 251, right? Then we'll go ahead and then we'll look for some more here. We got more bodies, right? We got more bodies here. You want to look exactly where the bodies are so that when you transition over to that 15 minute, everything looks clean. You know where you're going to bounce. 
You know where you can break above and you can break down. And you know what level to take profit, right? Because taking profit, obviously, is what we want to do. We want to go ahead and take profit. Um, so here we grab one more. And then uh, let's see. All right, and then we'll grab here. And then we'll go ahead and switch it over to a 15 minute. And I promise you, this might look super clean. Let's go ahead and look at our 15 minute. Boom. How that looks, guys. Super clean. Look at these rejections here. Look at these bodies here, right? Just by looking at our four hour time frame, we were able to capture what the 15 minute was doing based on our four hour time frame. Does this make sense? Drop a one in the chat. This makes sense so far, right? So go ahead and look at our 258 zone here, right? 258 here, 25801 here, right? You guys are, are, are seeing what's going on. Now when I switch this over to my, my two minute, right? Look how clean that looks. Just on the money, 258 here, we see where we can reject and we see where we can take puts, right? So when we switch over to our one minute, same thing, right? Same thing, we on the money, everything looks accurate. Does this make sense, guys? I hope this makes sense uh, using the four hour down approach, right? So you just wanna go ahead and switch this a little lower right here. We'll bring this down just a little bit. So this two, 258, 55 lets us know that the market has been rejecting. So we've been rejecting this level here right? That rejecting right there lets us know that we can continue to break down, right? Now, again, earlier I discussed with you guys that the, the break below lets you know to enter puts. Most people don't know when to enter. They say, all right, I don't know how to get in, right? So you want to get in right here, right? Let's look here at this, at this right here, right? Let's look at this right here. So guys, do you see this, this red candlestick indicated that we broke below our four hour time frame, right? So if we broke below the four hour time frame. That is a clear indication that you want to get into puts. Clear indication. And if you would have entered this trade and take this trade back to our next four hour, you would have been profitable, right? And that's simply the method, right? So the 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 name of the game is being patient, and the name of the game is also finding where the stock can break above when the stock can break below. I'll give you guys another example if you guys. So again, here, same line, 258. Did we break above with green candle? Yes? Type of one if you guys see that. Type of one in the chat, you see that we broke above that four hour time frame. We break above this four hour time frame and do we take it to our next four hour time frame? Yes or no? So the break above indicated that we could take calls at that level because we broke above our four hour time frame. That's why I feel that the four hour time frame is the most crucial time frame when trading when trading um intraday uh stocks, right? Now, oh, I'm sorry about that, guys. So there's there's a variety of different methods for you to be able to re-enter a trade, right? So another thing that you guys have to understand when trading is intraday level, right? And an intraday level would be something like this. So this is where the stock bounced. You had no line there, but that's where the stock bounced. That's what you call intraday, right? That's the intraday level, meaning the stock came here during the day and it bounced, right? And we've seen an uptrend. Same thing here, right? Same thing here. So those are your lines to also let you know if we break below these levels, we could continue or we can re-enter puts, right? So if you missed this trade here and you're like, oh man, I just missed the line. Now your next entry is your intraday level. And that's this trend line right here. And if you guys break below that, again, again, guys, even if you took the trade below that, again, massive, massive profit, right? So every time, every time we break a intraday level, I'm always calling, um, I'm always calling either a call or a put, right? And we'll scout that play. We'll leave runners. Um, I don't know if you guys are super um, knowledgeable about trading, but this is where I would tell my team, if we, grow, if we grab a play here and we broke an intraday level, I would tell my team to average up. Why? Because we're in profits and we're going to continue to be in profits by grabbing more contracts, right? Most people know how to average down and they, they average down because they're, they're losing in the trade. But we average up because we're winning in the trade. And you want to go ahead and grab more contracts 
that you can continue to win. It's like a snowball effect, right? So every time we break it, and then every time we break an intraday level, we continue to add money to our contracts. That's why I don't tell people when they're trading, I don't say, yo, um, go all in on this trade. You never want to go all in. You want to scale in. And I tell people it's like getting into water. When you get into water, most people, they put in one foot at a time, right? They might put their ankles in, then they put their other foot in. And it's the same thing when trading because you're dealing with money. You don't want to lose your money on a reversal. So what you want to do is you want to grab the best possible entry. And the best possible entry is always going to be the break below or the break above your four hours, right? Now, another, another entry that I just discussed with you guys is the break below your intraday or the break above your intraday. Why? Because if you took a play here, if you took a call up here, the break above your intraday level, then what happens? The market goes up, right? But what happens when you break below the intraday level, the market comes down, right? So the market is always fluctuating up and down, up and down, and most people don't know when to get in. But the best time to get in is understanding intraday levels, right? So I'm sorry about that. I'm going to give you guys some more sauce. My man Jordan said, let it rain. Let the sauce rain. He said, let the sauce rain, right? Boom. So now that we got that situated, right? Now that we have this situated, another thing that I want to discuss with you is impulse. So impulse is always going to be, impulse is always going to be your, uh, Impulse is always going to be where your breakout occurs, right? So your breakout occurs at specific levels. So I'll give you guys an example. We're going to look at the 15 minute time frame. We're going to go ahead and grab a trend line, right? And here is impulse, right? This is going to be the beginning of the new trend to the ending of that same trend, right? And now when you trade on intraday levels, guys, you can use your intraday impulse as a level to take profit. And I'll show you what that means, right? So what I do is when I'm trading, I'll take my impulse and I'll place it above the high. And then boom, it hit our same exact level of our four hours. So I know that we got it. My dog is wild in here, my bad. Um, Howdy, please. So if you see here, the same impulse level that we caught here, we just brought it up to the high and boom, it hit our same time frame, our four hour time frame, so that we know that that's a good level, right? Same thing here, we're gonna place it below. There we go. So this just gave this this level right here is something that we don't have, but you could go ahead and create this level. This is what you call an uh, intraday time frame, right? So you want to continue to grab impulses, and this impulse you can you can use it at different um at different break above and break belows, right? So I'll give you another example, right? So we'll take a play here, right? Like we broke here, right? This is another level, and during pre market, what happens? It hits, it hits the levels exactly right hits the levels exactly so your impulse is always going to be very helpful when trading to understand where the stock can go when the stock can break above right understanding your impulse if you guys have any questions you guys can just ask them in the, in the chat let me go ahead and look at the chat i got some more sauce for you guys i just wanted to go ahead and break uh break the um you know, just, just get you guys to understand the basics in the beginning so you guys can start becoming profitable, right? Uh, so I'll go ahead and see if you guys have any questions. Any questions, any questions, no questions? All right, Mark, all right, how to deal with Scroll, scroll down in the chat, bro. Yep, I see it. All right, so what is considered an impulse? I got you. Uh, how to deal with market levels that play out during those four hours, but the bid prices are now way lower so the trader is still red all right so boom great question right so when you guys are trading um a lot of people trade like cheaper cap stocks so when you're trading stocks that are not um they don't have much volume your bid and your your ask the spread is going to be uh very far apart so in order for you to to get in that play profitable you have to set a limit order meaning whatever they're telling you to pay you always want to pay less than so they're going to say, hey, the premium is going to be $3.50, right? And that's $350. But Moody's going to say, I don't want to pay $350 because I'm smart. So Moody's going to go ahead and say, I'm going to go ahead and pay $340 or I'm going to have to pay $330. Now, when the stock uh, reaches that $330, Moody would get filled, right? He's not going to take what they're asking him. He's always going to look for a discount. So your goal is to always look for a discount. You never want to take market price because just like you guys mentioned, 
the stock would go in, in uh, the opposite direction for a while and you would lose money. And then your emotions would kick in and then you would jump out the trade. Or you might have a tight stop loss and stop and stop out the trade. But it's because you didn't set a limit order, right? You have to set limit orders and your limit orders should always be, for me, uh, my limit orders are always 40 to 50 cents below, depending on the stock that I'm trading. So if I'm trading something like Tesla, I'm doing something like $2, right? My premium, meaning if my, my premium is $250, i am going in there at $150. Right, I'm not going to go and take that 250 because I know that pre, uh, I know that Tesla is very very volatile, right? Um, the bid and the and the ask are going to be very uh, far apart for stocks that don't have a lot of volume. So if you guys are trading like MDB, if you guys are trading uh, like SE, uh, C Limited, right? These are stocks that are not heavily traded, so their spreads are going to be far farther apart. Right. But if you guys are beginner traders, I'm going to be real. There's only three stocks that's going to literally change your life. And those three stocks are going to be QQQ, the SPY and the SPX. If you trade those three stocks, I guarantee you, guarantee you, you'll become a profitable trader. Now, the reason being is because those those stocks are are uh, their spreads are very close, meaning you get easily filled. You're in and out, and they're very, very volatile, right? So I trade the QQQ every single day. I trade SPX, the SPY, every single day. And they're very, very easy to gauge because they, they, they follow the same format, that four-hour time frame. They follow the same format. So if I go ahead and check what the SPX, and I might have a lot of lines on these because I, I trade these every single day, guys. Um, but when I'm, when, I, when I'm looking for these movements on these uh specific stocks or etfs i'm looking for the break below of my intraday and the break below my four hour right um so what i suggest that you guys do when you guys are trading uh you always change the color of your um your plotted lines just so that you remember what which line is which right i'll give you guys an example if i'm trading uh in this level this blue will be my four hour this yellow will be my 15 minute. This green will be like an intraday, right? So I'm I'm always remembering, um, I'm always remembering what my plotted lines are and the significance of those plotted lines, right? Uh, for my beginners that don't know when to jump into those movements, I can give you another another tip, which is change your line style to line. And when you change your line style to line, what this does is it makes it easier for you to plot, right? So now when you start to plot and you see these lines, just like this, right? You guys are plotting just like this and you're using these, 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 uh, these points to identify your candles, you go ahead and switch it over. You switch over to candles and boom, there it, there it goes, right? You guys will be able to use the line to go ahead and, 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 and uh, plot your line, right? So I always use the line, uh, I always tell beginners to use the line style um, when plotting. I hope you guys are learning something. You guys are learning something. Drop a two in the chat. Drop a two in the chat. You guys are learning something. Moody looks like he wants some more sauce. So I'm going to go ahead and give you some. Um, just real quick. I'm going to show you just, just real quick. This is a strategy that I tell you that that's literally 90%. Very, very easy. It's like the easiest, the easiest way to make money. It's it's the it's a cheat code. It's literally a cheat code. And I swear to God, it's the, the most simple, um, the most simple strategy that I teach, and it's super effective. You don't have to know nothing about nothing. You just have to put one line, and that one line is going to make you a lot of money. So, your premiums, right? They're most impactful during two phases in the market. They're going to be most impactful during a reversal, and they're going to be most impactful during your momentum. So when the stock is going in that same direction and those green candles are super green, your premiums are going to increase dramatically, right? Now, if a reversal occurs, 
and those candlesticks are all red, guess what happens? Your premiums are heavily impacted. Now, the only key to figuring out your entry point, right, is the break below your tread line. And I'll show you what that means, right? So you'll grab a tread line and you say, all right, boom, we're in a super uptrend right here. The break below that tread line, take puts. And if you do that every time, there's every time, if you do that every single time, every single time, you're going to be profitable. You just got to sit and be patient because the game is about being a sniper. Everybody could go in there with a machine gun and jump in a discord and take calls and take puts and, and lose money, right? Because your emotions and my risk tolerance are going to be very, very different, right? I can, I can afford, my, my portfolio can afford to be down $3,000 on a play. Yours can't, right? But if I know that I got enough money to average down and a reversal occurs, Boom, I make instant profits, right? Now, once you follow this, once you follow this moment, this, this strategy, you're always going to be in profit when looking for a reversal play, right? You always want to look for the reversal play. Why? Because I just told you that your premiums are heavily impacted during either reversals or momentum, right? So let's go ahead and look at a momentum play. This would be, uh, let's see. Let's see. All right, so this right here would be momentum play, right? This right here would be momentum play, right? That would be momentum play, right? Your stocks are severely going up, severely going up, severely going up. And the break below here, if you would have said puts here, you would have been profitable. But if you didn't scalp the play, you'd have lost money, right? Because we end up bouncing here back to our tread line. So again, I would tell people your tread, your 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 stop loss would be the the entry back into that tread line, right? So you have to have tight stop losses when you're scalping these movements. But majority of the time, you're going to make money simply on this one strategy. It's like 99%, right? Now, another thing that I want to discuss with you guys is what you call the gap and go and the gap and fill, right? And majority of the time, you guys are going to see things like this in the market because the market gives you what you call a gap. This is what you call a gap up, right, guys? So when the market gaps up, the market tends to go in that same direction that it gapped up from. So here's your gap, right? And then here you go. You start to continue to gap up and you start to continue to gap up and you start to continue to gap up, right? That's what you call the gap and go, right? Gap and go. Um, Now here, guys, same play. Here we gap down, right? Here you gap down, right? And then the same thing occurred. Gap and go. Gap and go. You guys are seeing it. And again, here, you gap down again, right? So another thing that I do with, with, with the SPX, guys, is the gap and go. If I see the market gap down, I know that there's a higher chance of me pro being profitable if I, con if I take the continuation. So these green candles are my entry. And it be it is crazy because most people are going to tell you, to buy puts when the candlesticks are red, but I'm gonna tell you about to buy puts when the candlesticks are green, right? And the reason I'm gonna tell you about this candlestick when they're green is because when they become red, your your um your reversal uh, premiums are gonna increase. They're gonna practically double, right? So you want to go ahead and buy those green candlesticks. Why? We gap down here. We 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 try to fill the gap, and this is what I said about the gap and fill, guys. So again. You, you fill the gap here. You put your 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 lines here. Do you break above the gap? Did anybody break above the gap? Did this move break above the gap? Yes or no? Let me get a, a one in the chat if it broke above. Let me get a one in the chat if it broke above. If it does not break above, if it does not break above, that means continuation. And boom, did we have continuation? Absolutely. And again, if you would have played the trend line trick like I do, profits. Anytime you are looking for an entry to a play, it's always going to be the break below or the breakthrough. Very, very simple. Right? I want you guys to be able to identify when trading. 
that your four hours, if you guys remember anything, you don't even got to remember my name. If you remember the four hour, break above and break below. If you remember the trend line uh, strategy, when if you break through uh, the, if you break through the trend line, you see a reversal. It's the same thing on the other side, right? Just right now, we're obviously in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a bear market, right? You're obviously right now in a bear market. But SPX, QQQ, and SPY is literally going to change your life. One, they're super, they're super inexpensive, right? Uh, they're, they're, they're the highest in volume, right? And you can, you can literally 100 or 200 or 300% your portfolio simply by trading those three specific stocks. You want to stay away from Tesla, right? You want to stay away from, um, well, not no more Amazon. It's a little less volatile, but the stocks that are super volatile, you kind of want to stay away from because they, they kind of, some of them have like, a, uh, they have, they're high in catalysts, meaning they're heavily influenced by news, right? You don't, you want to be, if you want to be profitable, you have to be very, very patient and you have to know what's going on in the market. So the Federal Reserve is always going to be speaking on a specific date. You have to have market calendar open, right? You have to know when the Federal Reserve is speaking. If Jerome Powell is speaking at 10 and the market opens at 9.30 and you jump in a trade at 9.35, you have a higher chance of none of, of your candlesticks respecting the line because news has just impacted the market, right? So yes, technical analysis is super important to understand, but guess what? News is always going to supersede the the um the uh the candlesticks, right? Those those candlesticks are going to be super parabolic, right? So you want to you want to gauge the trend, and I always tell people the trend is your friend, right? The trend is your friend. You're gonna be able to to gauge the trend. But again, if you miss out on an opportunity, Moody, right? Like if they're talking right here, and you see this, you see this happening, you're waiting for the break. You waited for the break below the trend line, right? And that's going to be a super. That's going to be a super uh, great entry for you to to take um, to take the trade and become profitable, right? Uh, again, another thing that you guys can do. Uh, I know that a lot of people that trade are very, very either one skeptical or two emotional. Change your trading style to line. You don't want to see if the candlestick is red or green. Don't let that. Don't let that impact your trade. If you know that you have gotten filled on a gap and go, and that's the strategy that you went into, then you know that you're in the right strategy. Yo, this is going to do this. I know it's going to do this. The green candles cannot scare me, right? Because I know that the gap and go is literally almost 70 to 80% profitable. I know that the trend line reversal is practically 90% profitable. So when I take these trades, I don't let green candlesticks uh, scare me out because I know that my trade is 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 100%, right? Sometimes a lot of us don't trust our judgment either. When we're trading, we're in the right play, and then we're like, oh, man, we got out too early. Or, oh, man, I should have stood in the trade. And it's because you're allowing your emotions to dictate your trade, right? In order for you to not let your emotions dictate your trade, you have to switch over your candlestick style. Because once you switch it over, you don't know if it's red or green. Right? And that's how you become profitable. You become profitable by letting your runners run. Right? How many of us have jumped into trades and we got our way too early? We got our way too early. And it's because we took 100 200 $300 profit. And we're like, oh, man, I did a great job. And then you could have made three, dollars $4,000. And it's because you didn't leave a runner. There was no indication of a reversal to the upside if you were in puts or vice versa. There's no indication. It never broke an intraday line. It never, it never created, um, it never created a reversal to the upside line, a tread line to the upside reversal. You just got out because you were you were like you it's like you were stealing some shit, right? It's like, yo, I, I I just came up, right? And a lot of times, guys, beginners traders, they they do that because they don't know when to get out. They just see 100 200 dollars and they're like, oh, that's good for me. You got to let your runners run. You got to trust your strategy and trust your process, right? And I know for me, the majority of my runners 
make me the most money because I let those contracts run out, right? Once I start seeing break above to the upside, and I'll show you like today, what happened was the break above to the upside, and I'll show you what that looks like today. We will go ahead, we were trading SPY today. We were trading SPY today, and we killed SPY today. Well, let me show you. See, all right, you see how I got all my lines situated and all that? Like, it's not like I'm giving you fluff. I'm telling you the exact things that I use on a day-to-day, -day, right? So I was just waiting for breaks uh, through these tread lines. But I'm going to go ahead and erase all this stuff, guys, right? So here we go. This is what this is what SPY did to us today, right? So I, I'm going to show you guys in one minute, right? So here we go, right? You take SPY puts, SPY breaks down, SPY bounces. You guys took calls on SPY. You guys made a shit ton of money. Shit ton of money, right? But then guess what? If you held those contracts today, you got burnt, right? And I'm going to tell you why you got burnt, right? So again, SPY created an intraday level here. And I had this plotted for the team. This line is what you call the intraday level, right? This is an intraday level. Why is this an intraday level? Here, you bounced here, and then you bounced here, right? So... You take puts to break below intraday level. Did I not tell you that? Now, if you took puts below the intraday level, you would have made more money in puts than you made in calls. Just by following one strategy, right? Because the shit works almost every time, right? But what if you said, yo, I, I like that strategy, but, you know, what if you would have did this? You did the same shit, right? And you would have made bank. So... If you look at, if you wait and you look for reversal, you got to understand that the reversal is going to come. The market does not run up 24-7. Reversals occur every single time. And since you're in a bear market, right, if you're in a bear market, you should know that the puts is going to come in anyway. So I was, guys, when I tell you, when I tell you today we bank, I swear to God, we caught this play here and I'll, 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 if you guys follow me on Instagram, I direct message you the profits of my team on how we caught this play. 100, 200, 300%. Easy. And you know it's Friday. Them contracts is like $100. You understand? So you, you have to be able to, to figure out that you're playing against a computer, but just like any computer, there's a glitch. There's something that these guys mess up on and you can take advantage of, right? And there's many different strategies. I got, a, I got a shit ton of strategies that I use on a day-to-day. -day. I just wanted to give you guys the ones that are most effective. Um, but uh, the, 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 the most, if you guys get anything from here, I want you guys to understand intraday trading. Intraday trading levels are the most impactful trading levels in the market. Because once you see a break below, the, once you see a break below intraday, once you see a break below intraday, right? And your intraday levels are going to be your intraday levels are going to be, you could, have took, you could have took an entry on any intraday level and made bank and not have to worry about a reversal. And here you try to retest and you try to retest here and you try to retest right here. And did we break above intraday? Nope. And if you don't break above intraday, are you in continuation? Absolutely. So are you afraid of this trade when you see green candles? Nope. Why? You never broke above intraday. You never broke above intraday. So you don't have to be scared when you see a green candle. And I tell people don't trade on the, the one minute anyway, always trade on the five minute, right? So when you're trading on the, when you're trading on a five minute time frame, here we go. How, this is how it looks. You see no green candles. See that? There's no green candles. So you don't even have to get scared at this point. Right? So um, how long I had? How I don't want to hold anybody up, bro. How long I have good? Hey, roll another 15, bro. Roll another 15. All right, bet. So um, let's see. Oh, all right. So another strategy that I like to use, guys, is what I call pre-market, right? You have to understand what your pre-market is doing so that you can take a trade based on pre-market moves. Um, uh, so you take a 15 minute here, we'll go to a 15 minute time frame, right? And you go ahead and grab your your um horizontal lines, you go ahead and plot. Your, you go ahead and plot your, your um, pre-market levels, right? So here's my pre-market levels, and this is where I'm plotting, right? So boom, the break above your pre-market, the break above your pre-market level, you take calls on, right? So again, here we had a red candle here. Did we retest our pre-market level? 
Yes or no? Throw one in the chat if you bro if you retested your your pre market. Did we break that? No, right? So here, this green candle, you retest it. So this retest of your of your um your pre market high sends the market running. So here we retest, and then boom, you take calls right at this level, 396, 396, 93, just where we rejected to the upside. Once you've seen this wick right here, there's this indication that we break into the upside, and then boom, you break out, right? And then here's the trick. You're like, I don't know when to get out. All right, I'm going to tell you when to get out. You just look at what happened to the left. So this is this is uh, Friday. This is Thursday. This is Wednesday. What happened on Wednesday? You fell at those same levels. And then look at what happened here. You fell at those same levels. So if you didn't grab the upside and Darius is like, damn, I missed it, Jordan. Uh, there's still entry at 4-1 to the put side because you never broke above your Thursday's high. Right? Or that, that's Wednesday. I'm sorry, your Wednesday's high. So if you're looking, right, at pre-market and previous days, right, you're always going to make bank because if it doesn't break a previous day in that week, then it's going to break down. And if it breaks below the low, it's going to continue to break down. So look at, look at this, just real quick. So look at this same level at the 390, right? The same level at the 390, the same exact, this is where it fell on Thursday, where we bounced on Thursday. And then it's the same exact level we fell on today. Same exact level. Can't make this shit up, right? So if you're just trading and you're looking at um, previous days, you know when to get out the trade. I know to get out the trade here because... We have to break below this level in order to see continuation. And if you don't break below this 390.05, then there's no continuation. And then what happened? A green candlestick directly after that broke out. Why? Because you never broke below this uh, Thursday's low. It never broke below, right? So if you're trading and you're looking for areas of opportunity, you just have to trade. Like it's Friday, you want to trade, you want to chart. Uh, from Monday to Thursday, you want to see what happened. Those are going to be the most crucial levels, right? Those are going to be the most crucial levels. Why? Because that's where all the consolidation, all the breakouts, all the breakdowns happen during the week. So you catch those same plays, and that's how we're able to catch these plays just by looking at your um, just by looking here at your at your consolidation pre market. Again, once you broke above the high, you can take calls. You ride the calls, and then let's see here. Let's look at what happened on Thursday. We take right here, boom, same levels. And then we check here, boom, same levels, right? So we know that this air right here became our supply zone, right? And supply means we're coming down. And then what happens? My man Darius takes puts, boom, in the money, right? You can't make this shit up. Then we... Did we break out on Thursday? Nope, we fell. Did we break out on, I mean, this is Wednesday, right? We tried, we, we broke all the way down on, on Thursday and then we try to retest on Friday and can we break this level of supply? Nope, so what happens to the stocks? They go down and they retest the low of Thursday. Instant profit, right? Uh, let me go ahead and answer some questions. You guys have some questions. Yeah, that's what I was about to say, bro. Open hey, up you know, my fault. I don't want to. I don't want to hold anybody. Y'all. I know you got a ton of sauce all day. All right. So let me just move up a little bit. All right. So it's okay. Yeah. You, if you're losing, I'm gonna be honest. If you're losing, it's okay. Like everyone loses. No one in here. I I lose. I don't lose as much, but I lose. Right. Um. Jordan loses. Everyone loses. Right. It's a part of the game. Um. But stick to the strategy. The strategies always work. A lot of my losses comes from either me getting in too early so not getting confirmation i kind of just wanted to get a lot of money out of the play or two i kind of like um i seen a reversal and i was kind of down and i'm like oh i'm just average down i'm average down and then the, the stock leaves me right and i lose more money so you kind of got to know when to get out you kind of got to know to trust your process um yeah, good job, Victoria. Oh, yeah, Victoria. Uh, that's one of my students. Shout out to Victoria. She did 50% on spot. Um, all right, so right here, guys. Try to answer it one. I'm sorry, bro. All right. All right, yeah, so I don't see that you guys have any questions. Uh, yeah, scroll through, and uh, Mui got some questions, too. I'm yeah, yeah, talk to me. Talk, I don't see them on the chat. 
Moody, okay. what you got, bro? Yeah, you can just, I think you can just hit the space bar. I believe. Uh, you. Yeah, I got a couple of questions, bro. I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to shout you out. I love your energy. Um, absolutely, bro. God bless you, bro. Peace and love. Um, but I love your energy. Uh, and it was just exciting to hear another trader and especially in another community, you know, building a whole entire community. Shout out to your community. I pray that it continues to flourish, brother. Um, but it was exciting to hear another trader talk about, even though it's a different strategy, talk about like the strategy that I use called the strat. But me, the way I teach and I utilize the four hour time frame a lot, you know, even for swing trading. But like you talking about interday trading, it was amazing because it's like I use. I use bigger time frames to enter day trade. I will never use a five hour time frame to chart something up. If anything, I'll do it on a one minute because I understand that the one minute is the one minute. It's its own world, right? right. But it was amazing to hear somebody, you know what I mean, just preaching the similar things that I preach, bro. Uh, and um, first off, bro, congratulations on your success. Congratulations on um, quitting your job, but... But seriously, I know you got houses and stuff for your family. Congratulations on retiring your mother, bro. I know that that's a big milestone. I know that all of us sons want to do that for our parents, bro. So like, I don't, you know, what I understand is that a lot of people that are in this educational space or in this uh, investing space or, you know, teaching people, we help a lot of people. And then, you know, sometimes, and I know you, you, you probably go through this, um, you know, people don't ask how you're doing. You know what I'm saying? So my question is just, how are you doing, bro? Like, how is your mental space going, like, um, as you continue to move along in your journey, bro? And um, and as well, I just wanted to give you some love, bro, and just make sure that you're doing okay and just congratulate you. Because um, sometimes as individuals, we we fail to do that. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, it's always best to not look at each other like competition, but what can we do to add to your table? Right. I appreciate you, brother. So, um, shout outs to you, Moody, uh, and, and the strat strategy. That's that's an excellent strategy to use. Uh, so you guys are beginners. Shout out to uh Moody and 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 allow him to to help you guys learn more strategies. Because the more tools you have in your tool belt, the more successful you can become, right? Because not every strategy is 100. percent There's people that lose um thousands and thousands of dollars, right? Um, and they win thousands of thousands of dollars, right? Um. For me, everything is going to be the success of my students, right? So watching my students become successful, that, that determines my mental health, right? If, if I'm teaching, uh, and, and one of my students are, is in here, right, Victoria, right? She's been with me for three months. She's become a profitable trader, right? She's now put on her sister. She's put on, you know, her, uh, her ex-boyfriend, and they're super profitable mm -hmm. in, in our Discord, right? So watching people... Uh, bring other people in and then become profitable. That's what allows my mental health to be sane. Uh, because obviously when people's losing money, and Jordan, I know you can attest to this, when people are unhappy, that's when the refunds come in. That's when the people are, are, are you know, speaking bad about you, leaving your discord. And, you know, that's when the, the mental health goes crazy, right? But um, we specialize in a bear market. So I'm going to be honest with you, Moody. Everything is excellent right now for me. Um we've been doing a great job of catching every play either to the downside or to the upside and everybody on my chat right now is profitable so i'm super happy about that uh i i just literally want everybody to win and me coming in here and dropping some gems for jordan and his team that that means everything to me you know i know jordan came to my he came to my discord and he showed a a, a ton of love you know um to my team so Everything is about giving back, Moody. Everything is about connecting, and it's nothing about competition. Uh, there's, there's there's enough money for everybody, right? Um, yeah. And I always say all the time, if you go to if you go to the store and all the breads are together, wonder is not wondering about anybody else, right? Um, if you go in and you see the the um, the dish soap companies, they're not worried about. They're right next to each other and they're standing tall, and people are going to still come in and purchase their product. So there's no such thing to me. As competition, um, we can only continue to embrace one another and get to the next level by utilizing our friendships. Um, because again, this is a whole entire market that I don't know about, that don't know me, you know. And and um, now you guys can follow me, follow my journey, or or tap in with me, you know. And, and either way, it's going to be love, you know, whether you guys tap in or don't. But 
Um, definitely follow me. Um, I, I give out a ton of sauce. Uh, you know, I do a ton of classes with the team and uh, we're just always looking to give back. So if you guys are, are interested in, in, in just learning the, the game and, and, and get into the next level, we could all uh, learn from one another. Like they say, each one teach one. So I appreciate you, Moody. That's a fact. And I appreciate you, bro. Appreciate the kind words. And just from uh, just hearing what you had to say, I want to also um, extend my, my hand because it's in my heart. Uh, if you ever need um, any kind of help or any type of assistance or uh, want me to run a class or something like that um, in your Discord on the strat, just let me know whatever I can do to help, you know, your uh, community grow. Um, whatever I could do, brother. That's been with me, bro. D D shoot me a um, shoot me a friend request. I'm yeah. uh, Goku Trade Stocks. Shoot me a friend request, me you could connect, brother. Thank you. Got you. Absolutely, and I'm a, uh, I'll shoot. Uh, I'll connect with Jordan, and I'll get your information from Jordan. And one yeah. last thing, bro. I'm from the Bronx, oh, and uh, I just hear where I just hear like uh, your slang, and um, I just want to say it's like tangible evidence for me. I know I'm already a profitable trader and a full time trader, but just to hear the things that you're saying, um, there's some accomplishments that I want to do myself that I hear that you accomplished, bro. So, um, oh, my question is, where are you from? We could connect, bro. We, we could definitely connect. I'm from the Bronx as well. But oh, word? Yeah, shoot me a DM and we'll chop it up. Say less. I'll be in the Bronx in, a couple, in, in, in less than a week. All right, brother. I appreciate you. Anybody else got any questions? I know, I know, I know we got to get out of here, Jordan. I think about one more, two more questions. How do you how do you handle retest on um, the trend line breaks? Uh, retest it, it depends. So like let's say we're doing a trend line break. If you if you set your trend line break on the five minute, right? If you set it on the five minute, uh, Jordan, if we set it on the five minute, you're not gonna see any retest on your five minute. You're gonna see it on your one minute, right? So I I'm not fixated. You see how we had two retests here on your one minute. I'm not fixated on those one minute because I know that I charted this on the five minute time frame, right? So I know that I have to wait five minutes to guarantee my one minute trade. So those two candlesticks mean nothing to me. So if I see two green candlesticks, I'm not worried about anything. I'm worried about, I'm worried about this, Jordan. I'm worried about the break above. This break above right here, that's when you, that's when you got to lose in trade because the trend just reversed on you. You just broke above your swing high. If you break above the swing high, reverse was just, you just got reversed, right? But if you don't break above the swing high, then your trade is still golden. You have to, you have, and that's why I talked about intraday trading. Because if you don't set intraday levels, then you guys are not going to, you guys are not going to be able to know when to get out the trade. So stop loss is going to be above, uh, above the, um, the swing trade, uh, the swing high, right? And the reason that I got it here, Jordan, is because let's say it gets to the swing high. And then it breaks down like it did here, right? Let's say it gets there and it breaks down. That that was supply zone. So again, I'm not faked out of the trade. I might be losing money, but that might be the opportunity to average down, right? But for the most part, if you don't break the intraday levels, then you're still in the trade. Make sense? Does that make sense? I think I think they should get that because I say the same stuff. So. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, yeah, that was one of the questions. A lot, a lot, of, it, a lot of it, a lot of it, is super common. Um, again, the, if if you guys don't learn anything, just learn and practice intraday levels. Practice the four hour. Practice the trend line. The trend line is the most effective trading stop. I swear to God, it's like ninety percent. We can literally go on any stock. You can look up any stock. Look up any stock. We look up four motor. Right, we'll look up any single stock, right? You look up any single stock, you're gonna be able to find, you're gonna be able to find a breakdown, a reversal, any single stock, right? It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter the 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 the, the stock, it does not matter. So again, that's my time, guys. If you guys want to follow me, Goku Trade Stocks, um, hit me up. Uh, we could chop it up, shoot me a DM. If you guys have any issues with trading, you guys want to get started. You guys need different strategies. Um, I, ha I have a, um, a ton of different selection of products that you guys can purchase to help you guys out trading wise. Uh, and if you guys just want to connect on a one on one and just figure out some things, I I'm open to that. I'm not Hollywood. I don't act bougie. So again, contact me. I show love. Just let me know. Hey, Jordan reached out to me. Jordan, I appreciate you, brother. Shout out to you and your community.
And anybody right. else, again, follow me, Goku Trades. And my man Moody from the Bronx. I'm from the Bronx, brother, so contact me, all right? Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you, bro. Um, Amen. Guns blazing, baby. We love it. Thank you, brother. Good stuff. That's dope. Hey, man, look, I'm going to let everybody on mute for like a quick little minute. That was crazy. That's crazy, right, Ertha? That was crazy. crazy. I learned, I, learned a lot. I just learned a lot from what y'all talking yeah. about. Yeah, John, right? He I like you, like right? He made it simple. He just made it simple. He made it simple, Sorry. He made it simple for real. Hey, yeah, I like I like the, the the strategies that he used when he said, you know, that it's everything and trying to get in before it goes down. Yeah. He gave a couple of strategies. A lot of, put a lot of people in for a Friday night. Almost a hundred people. That's a lot. Damn, y'all, we, we want it. Y'all, I, I appreciate we this. One, 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 one important uh, gem. I don't think anybody caught is that. At one minute, right? It's his own time frame. So he's trading that one minute, it's his own world. So that's why people get scared out there trade because they get in the trade and they on a one minute time frame. But you're looking at the one minute candle.